Hello Google Workspace fans, it's James here. In this video, I'm gonna take you on a brief walkthrough of using Google Tasks. Google Tasks recently got its own homepage at tasks.google.com. It looks like this. You can actually install this homepage as well. So if it's the first time you visited Google Tasks, keep an eye on the address bar and in the top right hand corner, you should see like a little download icon appear. Click on that and you can install Google Tasks on your, onto your computer. It will add the icon to your taskbar and your dock at the bottom on a Mac or a Windows PC. Click on that and it will open this window in its own window so you can just see your tasks with real ease and quickness. So once you're on this task homepage, you can see straight away that it separates your tasks into the lists that you've got created. So by default, everyone has a My Task list and then you can create other lists. So I've got one here called Project A. I can also create a new one by clicking Create New List on the left-hand side. I'll just give that a name. Uh, there we go, Content Creation and click Done and you'll see I've now got a new list there. So you can separate your tasks into lists and with this view, it makes it really easy for you to see all your lists and all your tasks. To create a new task, a few ways you can do it. You can hit the Create button in the top left-hand corner and give the details, but you need to remember on this one to select which list you want the task to appear in. It's a bit easier just to hit the Add to Add a Task button at the top of each column for each list that you want uh, that task to appear in. Once you've done that, your task will appear, it will automatically appear directly below uh, the Add a Task button. You'll see that the tasks are listed and in this they're just listed in any order you put them in. So any new, the newer the task, it will just go to the top and you can actually drag and move tasks around to how you want them. But you can also order, order your lists in slightly different ways. So you can order them by date, ones that you've starred or title. Now there's a bit of a caveat here, which is a bit of a weird one. So when you have a task, if you uh, click on the three uh, dots next to a task, you can create a subtask and this is a subtask here. So in this top task, you can see I've got the main task and then I've got a subtask and it's slightly indented and I can tick off a subtask separate to the main task. Now you can only see subtasks if you're in the view of my order. If you put it in any other view, for some reason the subtasks disappear. I have messaged Google support about this and they haven't been able to give me an answer. So you can see I've put this now in date order. So it's ordering them on uh, via date. So I can see my past tasks, the ones that are overdue at the top. I can see the ones that are currently present. And then I can see the ones in the future. But you'll notice that the subtasks have gone and put their own, th gone down here. This one has no date on it, but that, that was a subtask of this task. But for some reason it gets separated. So if I go back to my order, you can see the subtask has now reappeared back where it should be. It's really weird why they do that. And I do not know why, but that's just a caveat that you need to know about. Once you've got your tasks done and you've got them in the list, you can actually drag them and move them around. So say for example, the content creation list I've done, well, this is a bit about of creating a video. So I can just drag and drop it into a different task list. So that's how you can move tasks from one task list to another, especially handy if you've accidentally put a task into the wrong list, you can just move it across really easily. If you've got loads of lists, I mean loads of tasks and maybe loads of lists, but you've got loads of tasks and you want to find ones that are important to you quickly, you can put a star on them. So you can just hover over any task and stick a star next to it. The starred ones are really easy to access through the starred option on the left hand side. So you click on starred, there are your tasks that you've starred. You can find them very, very easily and simply. Going back to the all tasks view, as I said, once you've done a task, all you need to do is click on the tick box. That's it, that's been marked off marked as completed. You can see all your, your previous completed tasks by hitting on the completed button. And at any point you can uncomplete one of these just by removing the tick. So I've removed, if I remove the tick on this tick, tick on this one, man, I can't get my words out today. Remove the tick on this one called Cool Jordan and you'll see that's just popped back up to the due tasks. And again, I can just tick it again to remove it. So that's how you organize and manage your tasks and create new tasks. Um, you will get notifications if you set a date and time that when the task is due. Um, and this synchronizes with the Google Tasks app on your Android or iPhone device. Either way, so if you create the task on here, it will appear on them and vice versa. And if you've set a notification, the notification will appear on those devices too. Now there are a few cool things, things you can do with Google Tasks that are separate to this Google Tasks homepage. So say if we're on uh, email, so I can create a task from an email. So all I need to do is open an email. So let's open this one and across the top, you've got your icons and one of them is add to tasks. So if I click on add to tasks, it will appear on the right hand side. It's given the task, the name, which is the subject of the email. You might want to change that. Given that you can add some details, but you can also set the date and time, but you'll notice it's got an email icon on here. So it means that email's linked to this task. Um, by default, when you do it in Gmail, 
you need to pre-select the list you want it to go into. Um, so whatever list you've already got open, that's where that task has gone. So that training one that I've just done has gone into my tasks. If I had project A open and done it, it would have appeared in project A. So you might want to change that drop down before you create the task. But even if you've got it wrong, don't worry about it, because all you've got to do is go back to your home page and then you can just drag and drop it to whichever task list you wanted it to be in in the first place. But with the email icon here, uh, if I click on the email, it will actually take me directly to that email as well. So you've got the task and you've also got a shortcut to the email that was related to that task. Really, really super handy. So I recommend trying to use that out. It's, um, it's very, very, very useful. The other option with uh, Google Tasks is if you don't want to use the Google Tasks homepage, you can access it through Google Calendar. In the top right hand corner of Google Calendar, you've got a toggle switch and you can toggle between your tasks and your calendar view. Some people prefer this. Now, one other thing with tasks are when you give them a date and time, they'll actually appear on your calendar. So as you can see, there's one here that I've ticked off that I've done, uh, but there's also one pending. So if I click on that, it will pend uh, and I can see the tasks that are currently due. These tasks will actually follow you as well on Google Calendar. So say, for example, I haven't done this task. It will appear the next day and it will appear the next day and it will appear the next day under this pending tasks option until I've done it, until I've ticked it off. And inside Google Calendar, once you click on one of these tasks, you can tick them off and edit them here as well. So you don't have to do everything through the, through the tasks page. Now, the one final feature of Google Tasks is you can actually assign Google Tasks to people. And to do this, you have to do it through Google Chat and it has to be a chat space. So if I go to Google Chat and I open a chat space, you've got an option called Tasks here as well. And with this, you can create a thing called a space task. Now, the only difference with a space task, task is it gives you the option to assign this task to somebody. So if I go test task, I can give it some more details. I can set a date and time. So let's just say a, a date and time for a few days in the future. But here I can assign it. I can assign it to whoever is a member of that Google chat space. So I can assign it to myself. I can assign it to my business partner, or I can assign it to the account that I'm currently using, which is the training one. Um, and that gets assigned to the person. Once I hit add, that task, as you can see, has just automatically appeared in their task list as well. So if I go to the tasks homepage, it will also be there as well. So that's the test task. And it also has a link to the Google chat space. So if I click on that, it's gonna take me to that Google chat space where the task was assigned. Uh, and I can tick that off once I've done it. So if I hit, uh, say I've done it, I can tick it off. And it actually gets updated in the chat space as well. So that's the task that I just created. And you can see it's got a reply. So if I click on the reply, you can see it now says that task has been completed. So some people use this as a task management tool. They create a chat space, maybe call it tasks. They add their team members into it and they use it solely just for task management. So whenever the task comes in, they'll create a task, assign it to a team member. And when they wanna see the history of that task, they just go back to the chat tab and they can see the history of those tasks if they've been completed or if there's any comments being left by them. But that is kind of a brief overview of using Google Tasks in Google Workspace. Uh, I recommend getting the homepage, as I said at the start, installed because this is the easiest way to view all your tasks in one go, manage them, create them and do what you need to do. But I hope you found that video useful and enjoyable. Feel free to re-watch re it again as much as you want and give it a like if you did like it and also subscribe because that always helps out.